Hi guys, I'm Bobshi, and in this video we're going to add a spectating camera. So right now I have three players, and essentially when one dies, you should be able to now spectate the others until, you know, the game with the others end. When the last guy dies, the game will of course restart and everybody's going again. So let's first of all look at what we have right now. Obviously for a spectating setup, what really matters is essentially what the camera is doing. Now, one of the things that's important to keep in mind right now is, you know, we have the Cinemachine camera and that's essentially handled on the player controller. And we pretty much, as far as I remember, uh, enable and disable that camera depending on whether we're the owner or not. Now, we probably want this to be external at this point meaning we don't want to handle it in this script. So I'll make a separate script for this and let's put it on the Cinemachine camera, why not? So let's make a separate script and this is just going to be the player camera script and we'll put that on the Cinemachine camera. Now, having it on here, um, let's first of all figure out what exactly we want to do. So Cin Cinemachine has this thing that's called priority, which is probably what we're going to be utilizing here. So essentially the higher priority a camera has, the more it's going to, well, prioritize being the one that's being rendered. So if we have two cameras in the scene, one has a value of one, the other has a value of zero, it's going to prioritize rendering the one with the value of one. And so we can use this to our advantage. So going into our script, let's here in the player controller, let's just remove this line of code. And for that sake, we can just cut this one because we uh, just want to keep that. This doesn't matter. We can keep that off. And oh, actually, we do still need to handle the rotation. So I guess let's keep the reference up top. So let's keep the reference here because they do need to handle the rotation. So let's also have the reference in here, the Cinemachine camera. Let's of course make sure to import using Unity Cinemachine. Um, and now let's make this into a network behavior script because now we want to do some things on spawn depending on whether we are, oops, on spawn depending on whether we are the owner or not. If we are the owner, for example, we can set the priority to 10. That's a good way of handling it, right? And this is very, very simple. And so now going into testing, let me save the player like so. Oh, and of course I forgot to set the reference. So going on to the player, the camera, let's just make sure we drag and drop the camera in here. And now when they play, you can see it switches to this guy. As you can see, the camera kind of smoothed over there. Um, but as you can see, the camera now works and it does on all my clients too. If you don't want that camera smoothing, uh, you can always, always change um, how the Cinemachine brain, which is in the game scene, how that handles the default blend. As you can see right now, it's ease in and out too. We can just say cut and that just means it'll you know jump immediately. So as you can see now, it just immediately jumped to the right camera. Cool. So now we want to figure out how do we essentially switch the priority between players, but firstly, once we're dead. Right. Now, one of the good ways of doing this is let's, for example, get our player health. Our player health could tell us if we are dead. That's probably an easy way to go about it. Um, so well, I guess technically we'll be dead when we don't exist anymore because uh, we destroy ourselves right now. So what I think we should do is I think we should add a manager in the scene. That'll just be player camera manager. And let's put that onto the game manager. Right now with this camera, what we can do is we can keep track of all the cameras that are currently alive. So let's maybe do a private dictionary. Actually, let's just do a list. So a private list, and this will just be of player camera. And this will be all player cameras. And now let's do the classic thing where we're in a wake set up the instance handler. So we're going to do register instance equals to this. And then on destroy, we're going to do instance handler.onregister instance of the player camera manager. Cool. And what we can then do now is we can make a public void register camera. And we can essentially register a player camera like so. And we can also have an unregister camera. So we can do all player cameras dot add. And then we add the camera. And we can do the same thing if we just do this and then we call this one unregister camera and this one is remove and we can maybe also have a little safety check just saying if all player cameras contains the camera then we remove it just to make sure there's no null references here and we could technically do the same thing up here if it does not contain it then we add it or if it does contain it we just return that's fine um okay so now we can register and unregister the camera so let's go do that in the player camera script now so unspawned we should do this always regardless of whether we're the owner or not so we'll do instance handler dot get instance player camera manager and then we'll do dot register camera and we'll register this and we can essentially do the same thing on despawned like so we just want to uh, unregister the camera so we just do unregister like that cool so now we're registering and, and de unregistering the camera again from this list so this means that this list now and actually let me just rename that this list now always keeps track of all uh, player cameras that are active in the scene. Cool. Next thing is we got to switch between them. Um, so one of the easy ways to go about it uh, is we could, for example, instead of handling this in here on spawned, I think we should handle the priority of the cameras always in the player camera manager. 
because that way we can always easily keep track of it. Um, so what I think we should do, first of all, is let's just remove this line of code. And then in here, we can actually do uh, if the, so if camera that is owner, then we set the priority to 10 here. Um, and let's just make this a public just so we can access it like so. Um, this now means that, you know, it just basically the same code just from in this script. And this is just because I want to centralize where we essentially handle the priority from just so we don't have multiple scripts modifying priority at all times. Cool. So what we can also do now is when we unregister the camera, if the camera has, uh, if, the, if we are the owner of the camera, essentially, so if cam is owner, this now means that, of course, we don't need to set the priority to zero. But what we can do is we can tag it as we can switch cameras. So let's do a private bool can switch camera, for example. So when we register it, if we're registering ourselves, that means we're alive, which means we cannot switch camera. And if we are trying to unregister it, it means that we can switch camera. Because, you know, now we're no longer live, we don't have our own camera, so therefore we want to be able to move to another camera. What we should also handle, though, is the actual first switch, because right now, you know, we'll be we'll essentially be losing our own cameras, so we need to go to someone else's camera. So what we can now do is we can make a method, so let's make a private void, uh, switch next, for example. And this will essentially, so first of all, I guess, let's just check if the count is less than or equal to uh, zero. Then we just return um, and we can do the same thing with switch previous essentially, but we'll copy the method in a bit anyway. So let's just focus on switching next. Of course, we can also check if we can switch camera, but I'd honestly rather do that just from where we handle input. So let's do if input dot get key down. Let's just do key code uh, dot mouse zero. That's the left click. So let's say that moves us next. I'll switch next and we can do the same thing with mouse one that can switch previous. And then in the beginning of this method, we can now just check if we can switch. So if we cannot switch cameras, we just return. That means we shouldn't be handling this here, essentially, because, you know, we're alive. Um, you could also do it in a lot of different ways. You could also just check if, you know, our own player health exists or whatnot. Uh, but I think this is a fine way of doing it. Uh, as you can see, no, never mind. Uh, I was just about to say something wrong. Cool. So this now means we want to essentially move through these cameras um, and just pick the next one. So let's do a current index so we can always keep track of which one we're currently on. So let's do a private int uh, current camera index. Um, and let's set that. Uh, let's, just, I guess, just increment that. I guess first thing that we want to do uh, is we want to go through our current camera, which will be at our current camera index and set the priority to zero. That's essentially what it's doing here. Then it wants to increment the index. We also want to make sure that the index doesn't move out of the range, essentially, that we can be within, you know, if we're moving out of the amount of cameras that we have. And then we want to set the priority of the new camera that we find to 10. So this should essentially do the trick. Now it should immediately switch. And we should pretty much be able to do the same thing here, except we got to just increment the other way. So we increment down, make sure that it always stays above uh, zero and that it counts down from the top of however many we have, and then set that priority to zero. So let's go and make sure this is in the scene. We've saved the scene. Oh, and I of course forgot to add the switch next into the unregistering of the camera when we are the owner. So now let's go and test it. All right, so let's try and kill our host here. And there we go. Now you can see now he's spectating. Obviously up and down does not work and you can also see the body of the other player and we can always fix these. But now going on to the screen here, you can see whenever we click on the screen, you can see now it's switched spectating target. So whenever we click, it'll switch between the targets. Cool. So now we can switch spectator. We still need a little bit more functionality to fix some of these little issues, but essentially we have something spectating here. Okay, so going back into the code, let's figure out some of the things that we have to do. For one, we have the uh, the body of the player, uh, which I believe we're also handling in the player controller. Um, and we could pretty much just move this whole renderer logic, I think, into the camera. Yeah, I think let's try and do that, actually. So let's take this renderer and move it into the camera. This list of renderers. It's now moved in here and we'll also take this for each loop here and move it in. Uh, boom, so no longer need that there. And then let's do a private bool. Uh, no, sorry, not private bool. Private void toggle player body. I'll do bool toggle. And we can essentially put this in here and the shadow casting mode from Unity and dot rendering. Uh, and there we go. So this should essentially work, except of course we want to do it depending on what the toggle is. So if the toggle is true, then we want the shadow casting mode on. Otherwise, we want it to be shadow casting only. Cool. So now in the on spawn, we can do if is owner, we just want to set the toggle body to false. Um, and what we can now also do is we can do a public void toggle camera. And then we'll do bool toggle. And essentially what we need to do now is we need to set the camera priority depending on the toggle. And we also need to toggle the player's body depending on the toggle. And so actually, yeah, so actually, I don't even think that we need this or this. Oh, sorry, we need the toggle player body, of course. We don't need this up here. 
because we're going to be calling it from the player camera manager. So up here, when we register the camera and set the priority, we're instead just going to call toggle. Then we call the toggle camera. Did I make it private? No, I made it public in the player camera. Toggle camera to true. Why does that not work? Oh, that's because I'm doing cam play cam. There we go. So camera dot toggle camera to true. And then down here where we are switching them, instead of doing this, we now just do a uh, toggle cam. So we do dot toggle camera to false. And then up here we do toggle camera to true. And same thing goes on down here. True, false. Okay, so let's go ahead and test that out. Of course, we need to set up the player body again. But this time on the camera is where we need the renderers. So we have the renderers right here. So we have the character, which I believe was this one. And then we did also have, I think it was the hair, if I'm not wrong. That's also, yeah, there we go. Have the hair too. Let's just drag and drop that in there. Okay, cool. Now shooting him again. And there we go. Now you can see, we can't see any hair on the player. We can see this other player. And you can see now when we change, there you go. Now we can see him and we can't see the one we're spectating. So this now looks correct. And now all we need is the camera rotation up and down. So looking at how we're handling the camera rotation right now, what we could be doing is we already have this camera mimic, which is essentially controlled by the owner. Um, what we could now do is we could have the camera, I guess, either just copy this mimic um, when you're not the owner. That might not be a stupid way to go about it. Um, and I guess let's actually try that. So let's try and just serialize field, private, or rotation mimic, I think we called it, right? Rotation mimic, yep. Camera mimic. And we can also serialize field this up here again. Don't need that anymore. Um, and now with the camera mimic, what we can do is we can just in the update, we can do if we are not the, if we are the owner, we want to return. And if we're not the owner, we want the camera mimic, oh, sorry, we want the transform dot rotation to be the same as the camera mimics transform rotation. Um, I think this should maybe work. I guess let's give it a shot. Go, now we're going to shoot him. Instead, and there we go. Now when we look up and down, this looks correct as well. We can look left and right. And of course, again, we can change who we're looking at. And we can see what they're seeing. Cool. So now we essentially have fully functional spectator camera right here as well. Cool. Well, I hope you liked it. And I hope this video was helpful to you. Let's just double check that the respawning works correctly. And it seems like it does. We can see all the other players again. And yeah, it looks correct. Cool. Well, I really hope that you learned something. I hope this was helpful to you. And now you can add spectators to your shooter game as well. And uh, please do remember to leave a like, comment and subscribe. Let me know what other videos we should add to the series. And other than that, I just hope that you have a wonderful day.